Asian bittersweet is an invasive vine that blankets and smothers native vegetation and trees. It's destroying our forests and it's harming our wildlife. It girdles them, which means it wraps around them like a boa constrictor and strangles them. It strangles a trunk. You can see how it is wrapping itself around the trunk and I will show you examples later where it has really uh, squeezed the actual wood. Asian bittersweet was imported from Eurasia as an ornamental plant in the 1860s. Uh, and it's still sold in nurseries. You can still buy it online in particular. These green leaves are somewhat oval uh, with a little bit of uh, roughness on the edges. They are alternate along the stem here and here, 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 here. Well, here that's opposite, but generally they are alternating along the stem. This is the beginning of the berries. Uh, they're still green now in uh, July, but these are going to become red and yellow berries uh, in the fall. The bark on very young vines is green and smooth. As it gets older, the bark turns into a smooth brown bark. And very old vines look like this. You can see this one has climbed up the tree and is already strangling and scarring the tree. Bittersweet vines have very shallow, distinctive roots. They are bright orange. And you can see how shallow they are. They often grow just underneath the surface of the leaf litter in the forest. And they're often very, very easy to pull up. Good sized vines like this can be pulled up very easily. Do what you can to get all of the root. The weight of the vines makes a tree vulnerable to windfall. It can actually bring it down in a windstorm or with the, under the weight of snow and ice. Here you can see it's made a practically a curtain of vines uh, harming these trees. That's a great example. The bittersweet vine is twisting around itself, climbing up that tree. It has overtopped that tree and looks like it may have knocked down many of the branches or killed many of the branches of that black cherry tree. We basically now have a vertical column of bittersweet climbing up the barely living still trunk of a black cherry tree that it has almost completely killed. Here is a whole clump of bittersweet vines that have climbed up and are growing up this oak tree. There is no way I can pull these out of the ground. The roots are pretty thick and I'm not going to be able to pull them up. So I'm going to cut them with loppers. Cut them here. And then I like to cut them about shoulder height so that I can see that I have cut these vines and I don't come back several times to cut them again. Because we have done nothing to harm the bittersweet vine, we have to put herbicide on the cut stump. This is a mixture of 50% glyphosate and water with a little bit of purple dye added so we can see it. And then we put this herbicide on the cut stump. This herbicide will be drawn down into the root of the plant and will actually be what kills the bittersweet vines. So here's a bittersweet vine that is climbing up this ash tree here and very soon it's going to kill this tree. We're going to save this tree. Cut the vine that is climbing up. I like to take off a few feet so I can see that I have cut it. You'll notice the scar that this has, vine has left around the tree, strangling the tree and already squeezing off the tree's ability to bring water and nutrients up and down the bark. I then cut this a little above the ground and put herbicide on the cut stump. 
because that stump, that vine is too large for me to pull out of the ground, I need to put herbicide on it. Uh, the herbicide will travel into the roots of the plant and kill the whole plant. When you get to a root like this, we're not pulling it up. So you can use clippers or loppers, or in the case of a root this size, a pruning saw. And we have just saved this tree. Cutting this large vine that was climbing this tree saves the life of the tree for the time being, but does nothing to kill the bittersweet vine. Since we can't, this root is too big for us to pull up, we need to put herbicide on the cut stump to keep it from re-sprouting elsewhere. So I am putting a mixture of her, uh, glyphosate uh, diluted with distilled water and a little bit of dye added. You'll notice I just need to add it around the edges of the wood. I don't need to cover the entire surface because the edges of the bark is where the glyphosate and all nutrients are drawn down into the root. Uh, so by putting glyphosate around the edge of the cut stump, it is being drawn down into the root of the uh, vine and will kill the rest of the vine. In the summer, fall, and winter, you can use a herbicide. Anytime that the sap is not rising, the sap rises in the spring, and that's not a good time to put herbicide on cut stumps. In the summer, once the vine has leafed out, in the fall, when the nutrients are going back down into the root, and uh, in the winter even, uh, the herbicide will be absorbed down into the root and kill the whole plant.